Assalamu alaikum in this video we are going to discuss about chronic bronchitis and mainly its morphology but uh, first of all I want to mention here that what is the definition of the chronic bronchitis chronic bronchitis actually means that the presence of a persistent productive cough for at least three consecutive months in at least two consecutive years and this chronic bronchitis is defined on the basis of the clinical features as I have stated its definition and it is totally based on the clinical features now for example suppose that if any patient comes to you and he or she says that he or she has cough for two consecutive years. Two consecutive years means for 2022 and 2023, he or she has persistent plus productive cough. And uh, in 2022, she had cough for uh, April, May, June. Or uh, in 2023, she, uh, she or he had cough for uh, January, Feb and March. Okay, it can be any months or it can be any years. But for two, at least two consecutive months, sorry, two consecutive years. And in these two years, for at least three consecutive months right and you want to find the cause but there is no identifiable cause so in the absence of any identifiable cause and in the end in the presence of these conditions and terms which i have stated here you can say that it is the chronic bronchitis and it is defined on the basis of the clinical grounds right i hope so that this will be clear okay so uh other uh, and if we talk about its risk factors is its risk factors include that it is common in urban dwellers like in scenario sometimes it may be mentioned as it is common in the age of 40 to 65 years or of patients so any patient in this age category may be stated along with uh, um, it uh, along with the uh, scenario that he or she is living in big cities like Lahore like Karachi which are smoke ridden cities as well so you must think of chronic bronchitis and other risk factors include air pollutants like sulfur dioxide, nitri nitrogen dioxide, and cigarette smoking, etc. And these irritants mainly result in the inflammation. And the whole story then starts from this inflammation. This inflammation then results in all the features that I'm going to explain here in gross as well as in microscopic morphology. So, uh, in order to understand its morphology, you must know that what is the normal structure of a bronchus slide here stated. This is actually the normal slide. A normal structure of a bronchus where it is shown that it is the epithelium which and respiratory pathway or we can say that mainly mainly if uh, now we are talking about the bronchus so in the bronchus here it is pseudo stratified columnar ciliated epithelium uh, here if i zoom it out maybe it is appreciated that here it is here some cilia are present and it is pseudo stratified columnar epithelium and here goblet cells may be seen spaces which are shown here are actually goblet cells okay Number two here is the basement membrane. This is the lamina propria. Then comes the submucosa. These are submucosal glands. And and, and uh, here on left side shown cartilage. Okay. Actually, this is the structure of a normal bronchus. That if uh, epithelium, basement membrane, lamina propria, submucosa, and after that comes the cartilage. This is another beautiful picture which clearly indicates here is the normal bronchus which I have explained to you. And here is the chronic bronchitis case where mucosal gland hyperplasia occurs mainly and this is the characteristic feature of this disease here you can see um, here you can see that some mucosal glands are present but there is mucosal gland hyperplasia and particularly hyperplasia occurs in this layer one change is that this normal ciliated pseudo stratified columnar epithelium is changed by the squamous epithelium it is not shown here that it is it is ciliated columnar epithelium shown here but in chronic bronchitis mainly squamous dysplasia or metaplasia occurs and it indicates that this disease can also progress towards the cancerous transformation right and here uh, number one feature is that here squamous metaplasia or dysplasia occurs number two feature is that mucosal hyperplasia mu sorry mucosal glands hyperplasia occurs here and the number three that you must know is that reads index Re what is reads reads and index it states that the ratio of thickness of the mu mucus gland layer to the uh, thickness of wall between epithelium and cartilage just try to understand it carefully what i wanna uh, tell you people here is that if you see uh, if you see this mucosal gland hyperplasia or if you measure its length here like here if you uh, mention it as if you give it name as b and here you give name c and between this epithelium okay and this cartilage you mention it here as A and mention here it as D. In the case of chronic bronchitis, this B to C will be increased. Okay, B to C 
BC over AD ratio will be increased here. It means this mucosal gland hyperplasia and its magnitude will be increased as compared to the length between this epithelium and this cartilage. I hope so this will be clear. If it is not clear then you can uh, pause it and you can listen it again what I have said before. Okay, so this is the characteristic feature. Normally, reads index is 0.4, but it is increased in the case of the chronic bronchitis. Okay, three features I have told you here. Number one is epithelium. Number two is mucosal gland hyperplasia. Number three is uh, about reads index. Here you can again see that this is the epithelium. Uh, here squamous metaplasia or dysplasia has occurred, and here you can see that mucosal gland. So so much hyperplasia has been occurred over here. Uh, this is another picture of normal epithelium, normal structure of a bronchus. Sorry, uh, here is the epithelium, lamina propria. Here are the mucosal glands, which are normally less in number as compared to the uh, to this length between the epithelium and its cartilage. And this is the cartilage here. This is the basic difference between emphysema and bronchitis, chronic bronchitis. Uh, you may uh, take screenshot from here and you can. Uh, recall it later i have explained you morphology but one thing i would like to mention here is that uh, bronchitis uh, people with bronchitis are called blue blotters why they are called blue blotters because uh, here dyspnea is not a prominent feature emphysema in emphysema dyspnea is a prominent clinical manifestation but in bronchitis dyspnea is not a clinical manifestation what dyspnea means dyspnea means shortness of breath if a person doesn't have shortness of breath then there is no increase in the respiratory drive and if a person doesn't have increase in the respiratory drive, then mm, he or she may become cyanotic and as a result, the appearance of the person will be blue blotters. Because if respiratory drive is not increased, there is a retention of the carbon dioxide in that person and there is, uh, there is decrease in the uh, saturation of oxygen in that person. As a result, that person appears cyanotic or we can say that he or she appears as a blue blotter. Okay. Here you can see that this is healthy or normal bronchus but in the case of the chronic bronchitis inflammation occurs as I have told you before and hyperemia occurs this is a gross morphology that if you see the bronchus it would be hyperemic swollen by edematous fluid and as mucosal gland hyperplasia has occurred so there would be increased mucinous and mucoporinous secretions in this case as well so as it can be seen here but in swear cases maybe this whole lumen is uh, obliterated and this situation is known as bronchiolitis obliterans okay again here you people might confuse it with emphysema as emphysema's picture which i will show you in the next video is somewhat like this but uh, if it comes in your exams then you can write dds in your exams that one dd is or you can write it as this is a picture of copd and in dds you can write as emphysema and chronic bronchitis okay so that was all about uh, chronic bronchitis. Thank you very much.